The Candlestick, Chapter 1 The night that I will never forget. It was extremely humid and hot that summer night. I had to use a cold sheet for sleep since blankets were too heavy. As I lay there in my bed, I began to shiver. It was like a feeling of freezing ice running over me. I have never felt this type of cold before, so I opened my eyes to see if I had left the air conditioner on. I was in for a big surprise. A ghostly figure appeared right before me. She was floating like a cloud on a stormy night. Her long hair was as white as snow, and her gown was as bright as the sun. This angelic being gave me such a calming effect when hovering. She had made me feel like I wanted her to stay forever. I wanted to see if I could touch her outstretched arms, but that was the wrong thing to do. As I watched this spirit, who was just a few inches from my face, I tried to move away from her. My body felt stuck like I was trapped. Nothing would move and I started to panic. Felt powerless against her. Every time she sensed movement, her eyes became as black as coal. Her face kept fading in and out like a shimmering diamond. She began to turn into darkness I had never seen before. And the rest of the story is in my book, Altering Eternity. Short Stories of the Paranormal. You can buy it on Amazon, Kindle, Kindle Unlimited, or you can check it out on Goodreads. Have a great day, and stay spooky. was Beth Garcia, a piece of her book, Altering Eternity. I'm very excited to have Beth on the show today. We will be talking about her books and what led her into writing and a few other of her interests. So right after the following message, we'll continue with Beth Garcia. Good evening, ma'am. Hey, y'all. What can I do you for? Can I have a glass of Chardonnay? I'm sorry, darling. We don't serve that here. Any Merlot? I'm pretty sure you don't want these feet going nowhere near them grapes. All righty. How about a craft beer? Oh, yeah. We got plenty of craft beer. Which one you want? No, not craft beer. Craft beer. Oh, no, hell no. I'm, I'm pretty sure the bar down the street serves that. Okay, well, what do you serve? I'm glad you asked. Welcome to the Backwoods Barcast. We serve up moonshine, cheap beer, bottom shelf liquor, and stories even harder to swallow. Join Nick and Brittany and the janitor Stephen as we discuss southeastern mysteries and mayhem, including but not limited to UFOs, true crime, the paranormal, and much more. So knock four times, grab a stool, let the bar talk commence, and as always, drink more beer. That was from my friends, the Backwoods Barcast. It's a really fun podcast. I would encourage you to check it out on almost all the uh, uh, podcast sites, Backwoods Barcast. And now, without further ado, paranormal writer and author, Beth Garcia. And uh, where are you from, Beth? Um, I'm from California, and it's great to be on here. Oh, thank you. I was looking at your uh, profile and I see you have a new book out. Uh, yes. Altering Eternity. Uh, yes. That, uh, it's a book on short stories of the paranormal. Okay. How many uh, short stories are in the book? So there is um, seven, seven short stories, and then I have two poems as well. Okay. I, ha- I have on here that you're, a, uh, you're an author, musician, graphic designer, poet. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm working on a poetry book. Where can we find your book at? So my book is actually on Amazon, on Kindle, and then I also have it on Goodreads. So it can be on Kindle Unlimited or regular Kindle. So I have a paperback, and I also have e-books. The book on Altering Eternity, uh, many short stories in that book. Right. 
Well, this is actually my first book doing this, so I actually just wanted to put my story out there about the experiences I've had with um, with the paranormal, just from growing up. What What was your uh, first paranormal experience? Um, I must have been around seven years old when it started. Um, I actually talk about it in my book as kind of like a memoir, um, that part that's in there. But, um, so with the, so being seven, you don't really like think, okay, what's going on here? You know, you just kind of like, oh, whatever. <laughs> but, um, it kept happening over and over and over. So, um, first it was dreams and premonitions. Um, and then I was getting messages. Um, from the um, paranormal, from relatives that had passed on. And then they would um, send messages for me to send back to other people. And then after that is when um, I must have been, oh, in my 20s and 30s, is when I started actually seeing um, apparitions and shadow people. So it, it doesn't happen all the time. It just depends upon where I'm at um, that it will show up. It's not any one person that um, uh, gets a message. It could be anybody that I come in contact with uh, that has has a um, someone that's trying to either contact them or they're trying to tell them something. Mm -hmm. And these short stories in the book, is that your personal stories? or? Uh, yes. So I have six of them that are personal, and then I just have one that I just, um, took a little bit off of a um, of a candlestick that I had picked up from the estate sale, and then I just wrote a story around that one. But um, the rest of them are actually all of my personal experiences. And you had another book, uh, another book you had written, uh, a farmhouse lived short story. Uh, yes. So how many books have you written total? Um, so three of them. Um, so the first one that I wrote was uh, Secrets of the Quiet Visitors, and that was actually about how I grew up uh, with the paranormal, how it changed my life, and all the messages, all the shadow people. Um, even when I've gone to other places, other buildings, I've seen the full uh, apparitions. So it kind of um, describes that. And then Marked for Sorrow is the second book, and that actually is um, uh, my experiences that I did at Preston Castle. Um, and that goes through, like, what I saw there. And then uh, the third book, A Farmhouse Lives, is actually um, a dream that I had from a Victorian uh, couple that actually had bought a farmhouse. And it was actually possessed by a demon. And I had this um, possession from this couple was trying to actually um, come through me to get out into the world. Like I was battling this demon in my dreams for like all night. And um, I was just like not letting it try to get through. Um, so that kind of goes through that one. <laughs> so it's just been uh, kind of an intense uh, life with the paranormal, but um, I consider it a soul gift is what I describe in my book, uh, you know, as a gift that, um, you know, not everybody has it. Not everybody believes it. A lot of people don't talk about it, but, you know, when you do talk to people uh, that have things or when you have to give a message or when you see things, and it just, um, it's a gift to me. That's what I consider it as. Ouija boards. Or any oh, yeah. Or, I've never, uh, never done that. Or anything <laughs> that would... Uh, attract a demon or the dark side right. to you that you can carry on to your own home. That was another question was like, you know, do you, do you believe they can attach to somebody and move with you to another place? Um, it could possibly be that, that but um, from what I've experienced, it's always been something different. So the full, the full operation that I saw at my work um, and I was helping um, out my boss, um, and that's in my book. <laughs> but um, she was, she was. Uh, I could see her sitting in the chair, and I could see from her waist up completely solid. 
I could see the white blouse, the black bun, everything about her. She, she was solid. I got confirmation when I had told one of my maintenance workers that that was the lady that had died on the property. So I don't think it's something that, um, you know, for me, that it's just following me around. It just, things just um, tend to happen that I need to get a message through, like for my boss. She was supposed to get on the airplane to go f from our work, and but she had not been feeling good. And she had said when I had told her there was a lady sitting and staring at you, and there was no one else in the room but her and me and this this person, <laughs> our ghost. And um, she's like, well, something happened to my brother this way before he had his heart attack. She said something showed up, someone saw it, so he went to the doctors and they and they caught it um, and helped him with this heart attack that he had had. And so she's like, I haven't been feeling good myself. So she said, I better go to the doctor. So she took it as a warning. She took it as a positive. So she went to the doctor and they found out that she had an aneurysm in her neck and if she had gone on the airplane, it would have popped for the aneurysm. So... <laughs> She was like, thank you for telling me. And she's like, I needed that message, and um, and I'm not getting on that airplane. Well, how's your book doing? Um, I've only had it out since June, so it's I'm a I'm very a new writer. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure that before, you know, I forget anything or, um, you know, I really wanted to just put down my experiences in case someone else had a similar experience or somebody that I can connect with and say, hey, you know, um, this isn't just only me it's happening to, um, because I don't know anybody really that um, does this, so I just put my book out there. <laughs> so, I mean, and if you keep your eye on the statistics on, you know, how well you're doing, a lot of people drop out real quick because they're expecting a quick overnight success. You know, the worst thing to do, you know, when you do nothing but if you try, who knows who's listening to this that may have a connection, you know, and uh, you never know who's watching you and who or who's maybe interested in, in, in your song or in your book or in your painting. I mean, it's a it's tough out there when you're competing with so many different artists, you know. Oh, yeah, that's why they call it struggling. <laughs> oh, right, you know, and that, and that, that was another thing I was looking at, you know, because they said the average author makes a, a minimum wage. I mean, that's the average author. Like, say you receive an advance allowance and you get 10% of your ro royalties, uh, net profit. If you sell your book for $25 per book, you would need to sell 4,000 books to break even on the, say, $5,000 advancement. Right. Yeah, it's difficult out there. It's, you know, it's, cut, it's cutthroat out there, and you got to watch who you, who you uh, deal with. What's great now is the uh, social media, so you have a lot more uh, ways to attacking your sales, you know. Correct, yep. I see you're on uh, uh, Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. Well, that's because I'm a self-published. Well, that's great, because if you're not answering to somebody, then... <laughs> nope, it's all me. It's all me for marketing everything. <laughs> I was always assuming that if you got a book out there and, you know, that you're on your way, yeah. the key is trying to promote yourself and get to many people as you can. It's it's different when you have someone that you go through, an agent, and then, and then they promote it themselves and things, and then you are self-published. So self-published, you definitely have to do everything yourself. Right, right. You're, you're doing all the legwork and everything. Yeah. You get frustrated because you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> but you just keep going. <laughs> what, what got you interested into writing uh, your first book? So um, so my first book, The Secret of the Quiet Visitors, um, I wanted to put my experience out for uh, my memoir. It's basically my memoir of from seven years old and how you grow up and you tell people when you're a kid, you see things that people don't believe you or they just laugh at you and go, oh, ha, ha, you know. But you keep, you see, you start to learn to internalize, like, okay, I'm just not going to say anything anymore. But when it kept happening um, over and over as an adult, and even up until the last one I've had was just three years ago, and that was with the shadow figure when we were trying to look for a house. That one scared me because... Um, all the other ones have been okay, you know, like, 
positive. I've never had anything really attack me or anything like that. But um, this one, when we went to an open house, and we were looking at craftsmen homes, and they're about 100 years old. And so I was in the living room, and um, our, the realtor, there was a lot of people coming in and out of the house. And the realtor agent said, oh, there's a basement. It's refurnished. Go and check it out. So my husband went down there first. He went down the stairs. He's all, hey, come down, come down. This is really cool. So I went from the living room. I stepped it through the door to the basement. And as I turned to go down to the step, the entire basement went black. There was no sound. And there was, it went in totally black. And in the corner was a seven-foot um, shadow figure of a man. And he was just standing there staring at me. And I was like, nope, I am not buying this out. <laughs> so I went back into the living room. And my husband came up and he's like, why don't you come down? I said, did the lights go out? Because the lights went out. He's like, no, what are you talking about? None of the lights were out. Everybody was down there. Everybody was laughing, thinking how great this house was. I said, no, I am not living in this house. We are getting out of here right now. And I told him what had happened because he believes everything that I have said because he knows, like, when I say something, like, you know, that's that's what's happened. So he's like, yeah, no way. Uh, we're out of mm-hmm. here. <laughs> so I was like, no, 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 I'm never doing that. So, um, so yeah, so, I mean, in one way it was good. I saw it because that, cause we really loved that house and we wanted to buy it, and I'm like, no, that's just not gonna. That's not gonna fly if I can see it already. And we just walked into mm-hmm. the house. So yeah, and I just know from talking to uh, our priest of church that yeah, there's quite a bit of activity in homes that uh, yeah. you, you know, usually the yeah. person didn't move on or spirits there. And that's another thing I talked to some uh, paranormal investigators is they don't believe in moving on. You know. Uh, they believe if you're going to get rid of the spirit that you're killing it. Or I kind of believe it has to go and the spirit has never, the body may be dead, but the spirit never moved on. I think sometimes if it's, if it's not really gone, it's just like it hides back into where it needs to go. I have found also that the abandoned hospitals and insane asylums have a lot of activity. And then you're, you're dealing with either ghosts, spirits, demons, poltergeist you know but basically it all equals to right. which my belief is somebody had died a violent death and that's the spirit that's there yeah. like my son-in-law would say you know he'll believe it when he'll believe in a ghost when a ghost comes up and kicks him in the butt and <laughs> so I said, well okay you know but well and i think everybody has their own version of a story when it happens because and that's one thing with, um, I think, with the paranormal experiences, um, you could tell people till you're blue in the face, but if they don't experience it, if they don't see it, if they don't feel it, you know, they wouldn't, they won't understand it, you know. And so, um, I do admire people that are going out and and trying to, you know, actually catch and observe and document everything because um, that's the only way that people that have an experience would be able to say, okay, maybe this is something that there's something actually going on between our world and the, the next one. So is there anything you want to close out with? Uh, I'm just very happy that you actually um, contacted me. I'm very flattered. <laughs> Hopefully this uh, book will give other people some food for thought about what maybe is going on. Um, in the paranormal world. I'm working actually on a poetry book that has some dark poems in it. Um, and then the other part is uh, my lyrics that I write for when I was, um, for my singing that I do. So I'm doing a combination on my new book, but that's not going to be out for a while. I don't even have a name for the new book yet. <laughs> I just have some lyrics that I've written. I've written seven songs and then the rest were dark poetry. <laughs> okay, Beth, uh, thank you for being on the show tonight. And I really appreciate it. All right. You have a great night. I want to thank Beth Garcia for being my guest tonight. She is the author of Altering Eternity, Short Stories of the Paranormal. And also to my friends over at the Backwoods Barcast podcast, uh, Nick, Brittany, and Janitor Steven. If you get a chance, man, check out that podcast. They're off the hook. Backwoods Barcast podcast. And we will see you in two weeks.
with another great episode, Ghosts in the Valley.